normally the the you would think that you know uh, head coach is somebody who starts like say as a toll taker in the Pennsylvania Turnpike, <laughs> and then he becomes a head coach, yeah. like the man who's joining us right here on the Rich Eisen Show, the Dallas Cowboy head coach Mike McCarthy. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, Rich. How are you doing? That's a great introduction. I'm serious, though, man. You know what I mean? Like, you, you're you taking change, right? Isn't that what you're doing? The turnpike? It was an excellent suburb job for about six weeks. But, yes, I did take change at the Pennsylvania Turnpike. So what what, what exit? What exit were you were you working? Well, it was exit six. Or, no, it was exit five back then, but they, they changed it to uh, the mile markers. So I'm not, I'm not sure what it is. Now. Okay. But, I mean, yeah. that, and, and you were doing that because you were, what? You Were you a grad assistant at Pitt at the time? Is that what you were doing? Yeah, I was actually a volunteer assistant. I, I just grad, I just graduated from uh, Fort Hayes State University in Kansas, and um, got my master's degree out there. And then I was volunteering at Pitt, so I did that during the summer, um, just pr- you know, prior to the '89 season. What is it about coaching? <laughs> what is it? I mean, because uh, honestly, you you didn't you didn't have to get back into it. But you did, and you, I mean, obviously, there is no more plum job, certainly in the National Football League and football as the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. But what is it about coaching Mike McCarthy that you just some? Because I see it from Mooch, you know, I see it from so many of my colleagues that I work with. It's so tough to get out of your system, out of your blood. What is it? Well, I think like all of us, I mean, it starts back, you know, in your youth is you're, you're part of a, you're part of a team, and there's uh, I, I think it, you know, outside of your family. There's not more special than being part of a of a football team. You know, just the the camaraderie, the everyday, that you know, the work ethic that and the commitment that goes into you know, doing hard stuff with with a with a bunch of people you respect. So um, that's I think that's a part of what drives all of us. So let's talk about um, the kid that you drafted in the first round. We had Micah Parsons on a few days before the draft. I he had me at hello. I love yeah. the kid. I mean, like, uh, honestly, like he – and then, you know, I, th- I, I I think he almost put the commissioner in traction, to be honest with you, when he jumped in his arms <laughs> when he got drafted. <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if the commissioner wants that information out there, but, <laughs> you know, he needed – they, they usually don't have a chiropractor back there in the green room, but, I mean, and, and he said he wanted to be a cowboy. Now he is. What, was your, what were your conversations with him like leading up to the draft and, and after – well, definitely. I mean, the first thing is his energy. Uh, he, he's he just has that impactful. You know, it's just from the first impression, it, it was great to see him on TV. I I think it is hysterical. I think there will be a chiropractor at next year's draft. <laughs> but uh, live and learn. But no, he's uh, just had a great visit with him and his family, and uh, just just the whole the energy of the way you know to talk about his upbringing, uh, his experience at Penn State, you know, the year off. So. Um, he, he has uh, made a huge impression on us from the from the first day, and, and even you know during the during the week with the virtual meetings and so forth. So, looking forward to getting him in the rest of the draft class in here next week. Well, now you obviously got an alpha in Jalen Smith anyway, but how much are you going to put on his plate? How much you plan on putting on Micah Parsons' plate? Well, I think right. it, I mean that's that's really what the this off season will be about. So, I mean we. We have more depth at the linebacker position than, than Frank I've ever been a part of. So we're we're excited about you know pulling that together. You know, speaking with Dan Quinn and the defensive staff actually Friday morning, right after you know Micah's selection, we were you know we're diving into different personnel groups and so forth because you know we obviously want to make sure we're creating opportunities for for all of our guys. And then the addition of Dan Quinn, and then the addition of more than just Micah Parsons. I mean, you want to talk about hitting the draft uh, hard on one side of the ball. Your first five, six picks were all on the defensive side. The sense that you're adding more youth to the position and then uh, a defensive coordinator who acts like he's a teenager because he's so bouncing off the walls, <laughs> you know, uh, that, that, that the concept is here, Mike, that, that this is automatically going to change the defense on its face, the scheme will be more attuned to what the players who you already had in there were used to before you arrived. Uh, what do you make of that general sense and narrative of the Cowboys on the defensive side of the ball? Well, I think like any time you have a change at the head coach position, there's a there's a vision of the football team that that's obviously going to be different. I mean, that's that's part of why you make a change, and you know. Upon my arrival, uh, you know, one thing we wanted to to be on defense is we wanted to pl- have more length and more speed, and and I think you're just really seeing that come into, you know, 
you know, come come into place now here in the second year, and, and I think the draft definitely reflects that. And you know, Dan Quinn brings a, you know an expertise and an energy that we you know definitely our guys have already bought into. Uh, you know, our offseason program is has been outstanding. I can't say enough about you know the the players and the coaches what we've been able to get done here the first couple of weeks. So, uh, but this this is more about changing the the vision and and, and how we want to play on defense. And I think we like you said, I think we hit the jackpot. In this year's draft. Well, I mean, Mike McCarthy, you're the Cowboys here on the Rich Eisen Show. It's interesting you use the word buy-in because that was part of the conversation last year, as I'm sure you're aware, in the Metroplex, um, that there was a lack of buy-in for your scheme and what you were uh, attempting to sell to the players that were there. Do you feel that there is a better sense uh, on that subject matter as we're sitting here the following May getting ready for a 2021 season? Mike. Yeah, I think going back to last year, I don't know if it, much of it was buying. I think it was more understanding and time together. I, I think any first-year head coach um, would would have to say that you know time with your players was the probably the biggest challenge. I know I felt that way all the way from day one. I mean, from the not being able to speak to your team in person until the first day of training camp, all the way through. So um, I think we've actually been able to establish. You know how we want to play uh, in the last eight weeks on defense. You know we we finished, you know uh, seventh in the league and taking away the football. So that, that's a great foundation of how we will continue to play. And so I, I think it's just really part of the transition. Last year was more of the transition from, you know the the way defense was was viewed and played prior to my arrival. And and, and hopefully I, I see us taking a big step there this year. Mike McCarthy, Dallas Cowboys head coach here on the Rich Eisen Show. How is Dak Prescott? Coach. I mean, he looks great. I mean, he really does. I mean, he's in there every day, so um, I, I can't say enough about the progress he's made. You know, I, I think it's like, you know, all of us, there's different threshold, thresholds you have to get over when you're you're coming back from from anything, and you can see just his, uh, you know, he, his ability now to, you know, he's throwing to the perimeter group, and um, but he's he's taking a he's taking a bunch of bunch of steps here and uh, it looks great uh we're, we're, we're excited and I, and I think he'll be, he'll pick up right where he left off well when would you say i know you're not a doctor you don't play one on tv um and and i know uh, coaches do the only control what they can control situation but is your expectation that uh week one when we learn the schedule next wednesday and where you're going to be um that it's going to be dak for you but, well, you, you took away all my coaching one-on-one uh, answers. So, I, I have to, I'm, so I'm let's go to the advanced learning. Right let's go to advanced let's, learning. Well, you well you can or you could go full <laughs> Kyle Shannon and say that we could all be dead yeah. by then anyway. So uh, you know. I'm not I'm not one to jump in a news cycle for, <laughs> for a couple of days. I like to get in and get out. But, but uh, no, I, I, I yeah, I, I think we're right on track. I, I think everything that uh, you know the medical. You know, people talk as far as his, his rehab. He's, you know, he'll definitely hit the target. I'm, you know, I'm hopeful that with the OTA practices that he'll be in there uh, full go. But you know, he 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 really lo- he looks great. There's really, I don't think anybody has any doubt. And again, I know coaches. Again, uh, you can only control what you can control. It is what it is, and all of those 101 coaching phrases, though. Uh, you, did you ever at any point during the last few weeks, months before the contract got signed, say, Jerry, what's another, what's another couple million? Come on, you know what? what, do you, what do you, come on. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't quite like any of those <laughs> words, but I was definitely in favor of getting the contract <laughs> done. So, and uh, that, that, that was clear. And but no, I, I think it's uh, you know the business part of this is is something we all have to deal with, and some are so much more public public than others. So yeah, I, I think it was. It, it, it was a it was a it was a great day when his contract was completed for everybody here. Mike no Mc, doubt. Mike McCarthy here on the Rich Eisen show, and you have been around some very talented players, certainly on the offensive side of the ball, as we know from all your years in Green Bay with Dak and Zeke and Amari and Gallup, and obviously Ceedee Lamb in year two. And I'm sure I'm leaving off some very important people. Mm-hmm. Where does this rank for you? Collection of talent, what can be done? From your mind, your scheme on the field to win games and championships. Where does this rank for you, Mike? Well, McCarthy? I think we definitely have have a chance to be you know one of the, the better or best groups. Clearly, in, in my time, it's you know I, I think just really that, that we're going back to time together. I mean, just you know Dak just playing you know first five games and you know keep you know Blake Jarwin was was injured during week one, so just 
getting all these guys on the on the field, especially with our tackles. You know, Tyron and LC look great uh, going through the workouts. To to get everybody out there, you know, playing as a whole unit, I, I think we have a chance to be special on offense. And um, you know, just being the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, um, you know, if I again, you know, obviously you've had an incredible career. If you want to talk about um, you know places where you've been. Um, San Francisco prior to Green Bay and now here to Dallas, the toll taker. What would the toll taker have said if I said you're going to be the head coach of the Packers and the Dallas Cowboys, the two? What would that happen, Mike? Well, I mean, it, it, the, the toll taking days was really just trying to make it at the University of Pittsburgh. So, but uh, I think it's just a you know an example of you know having having a dream and, and, and putting the putting the work to you know have the work ethic to chase it. And uh, but yes, this is. Um, to be the head coach of the Green Bay Packers and now the Dallas Cowboys, I, 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 it's beyond my dreams. And yes. and and it's interesting too. We were talking about this before, Mike McCarthy, because uh, you know my my uh, social media grand maester, as he likes to be called, on the set. T.J. Jefferson's a diehard Cowboys fan, and we were talking about when you know people are most disappointed by results that they got to snap the television off. They're so upset. He mentioned it was a time where Des Bryant he thought he caught it, <laughs> and uh, as we all know, Des did not. How does it feel for you to walk around that building being maybe the only human being in that building who might uh, think otherwise on the concept of whether Des caught it, Mike? Well, I mean, that's a great topic because I think the timing of, you know, I think the timing has been great because they actually changed the rules on what it catches now in the yes. league. So, that's right. Uh, so technically today, Des did catch it. <laughs> At that particular time, he, he did not. So, and uh, and I'm just glad that we wow. challenged it and I'm glad it worked out on that particular day, but... I definitely understand what uh, how everybody felt on the other sideline. Of course, sure. but so did you just both sides the situation <laughs> right there? Did I just hear that that on the day it was one thing, and now you're part of an organization that you can admit, um, you know, that he did in fact catch it. Is that what you're saying? I thought it was, you know, Sam Shields and Dez. I thought it was two great athletes going up to make a play <laughs> on the ball, and it came down, and and I'm just thankful the game was. It was at home, and I got like 17 looks at it on the jumbotron, and I uh, had a chance to talk to to Gene, that you know, about the role of the catch and so forth. So it, it, it timing has a lot to do with those types of things, as you know, Rich. And uh, the rules were different back then, and it had worked out. So, but okay. the rules today in today's game that would be a catch. There you go. All right, very good. Says the coach of the Dallas Cowboys, yeah. right there. Yeah. So TJ, I hope that hopefully that's that's good for you because we we want to make sure TJ's okay, uh, Coach. Because you, you might not be aware, he was on the prices right earlier this week, <laughs> and all he came away with was a ping pong table and a popcorn machine. He went he, he's part of a double over uh, at the end of the show. So we're trying to buck him up as we head to the weekend. You know, well, that, hey, the more I can do for you, Rich. You know, that's that's what I'm here for. Okay, appreciate that, Coach. There you go. Yeah. There is an eye in my, uh, Mike, but he's a team player. <laughs> coach, thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Send my best to everybody there, Rich Dalrymple, and everybody just uh, part of a, a great cr- group and crew. And let's do this again, uh, if you don't mind, uh, training camp. Definitely. Thanks for having me on, Rich. You got, we'll chat. God sir. Bless. You go Cowboys. You. There you go. There you go. It's Mike McCarthy right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here. 